And now, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, ladies and gentlemen, the brash up-and-comer, the ink box, black the seasoned veteran, the ink black V2. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're reviewing two modern classics in mechanical keyboard switches. The context around these switches is pretty unique. The ink box black is pitted frequently against the ink black V2s. It's framed in a story of succession, where the newer ink box black renders the older ink black V2 obsolete. This is significant because for the longest time, the inks were, and still are, the de facto recommendation for linear switches. So which one is better? Let's begin with the similarities. As the name indicates, these both belong to the ink series of Gateron's lineup. And this is because both the ink box black and the ink black V2 are pretty much made from the same materials. They feature housings made up of quote unquote ink, which is a proprietary plastic blend from Yadaron. In terms of aesthetics, these ink housings are translucent, so they're suitable for those seeking to use RGB lighting in their keyboards. They both have the same spring weight, they are both rated for a 60 gram actuation and a 70 gram bottom out, so they're both medium heavy in that regard. But in figuring out which one is better, we're more interested in the differences. Are the newcomers, the ink box blacks, a step up from the ink black V2s? So you'll notice that the stems on the ink box blacks are boxy, and the ones on the original ones aren't. In theory, box stems are dustproof, but in practice, it's not very consequential. I certainly wouldn't choose one switch or the other due to the supposed benefits of any certain kind of stem design. One thing that might immediately tilt the direction in favor of the newer ink box blacks is this question of north-facing interference. If you have a north-facing PCB and use cherry profile keycaps, you're gonna have to pick these box switches. The older ink black V2s do have north-facing interference. Otherwise, the main differences in the two come in travel distance and spring design. Due to those two factors, even though the ink box black and ink black V2 are graded for the same actuation and bottom out force, the typing experiences are still pretty different. With the ink black V2, you have more travel with a shorter spring. It features a 15mm spring and a 4mm travel, which is the standard switch travel length. So all things considered, uh, pretty standard. But we deviate from the standard with the newcomer. With the ink box black, we have less travel with a longer spring. So here, we have instead a longer 19mm spring, 5mm longer than the ink black V2s. Plus, the travel is reduced, coming in at 3.6mm compared to 4mm with the ink black V2s. So things are more condensed in this ink box black, resulting in a snappier, more responsive feeling. These technical differences can feel a little bit abstract, so here's a metaphor to hopefully ground things a little more. Typing on the ink box black is like drinking espresso, which has a strong and concentrated flavor. It's a very condensed drink, so it's more intense. And on the other hand, the ink black V2 is like drinking a normal cup of drip coffee, which is a lot more mild compared to espresso. It has a lighter body and the flavors are a lot more spread out. Now, I don't want to over exaggerate the differences between these two switches, but the ink box blacks will feel closer to the intense side of things and the ink black V2s closer to the gentle side of things. And now a quick word from our guest this week, Patrick Starr. Wow, have you literally been living under a rock? That might be the case if you haven't heard of Milktooth's try at home program for mechanical keyboard switches. As a starfish, I love being able to feel stuff before I buy them, especially since feeling is hard to communicate through text and videos. And that's exactly what I love about this try at home program. It lets you try switches before you buy them. You pick five switches to try at home for five days so you can quickly discover which one is the best one for you. If you're stuck between the ink black V2s and ink box blacks, well, that's easy, haha. -ha. Just add them both to your try at home cart and find out which one you prefer. Click the link in the description to get started or go to milktooth.new. Thanks, Pat. So is the veteran or the newcomer better in terms of sound? I'll compare these ink switches with a bunch of other linear options out there to contextualize them better. I'm going to select a few linear switches with different sound profiles to see how they stack up against each other.
So, as you can tell, the ink black V2s are a little brighter than the ink box blacks, but they're both in the same zone when it comes to pitch, and the loudness is approximately equal. So which switch wins the battle for supremacy? Let's say you really like the sound quality that the inks have to offer, so it's gotta be between one or the other. In that case, since the sound profile is so close, it's going to be the typing feel differences that matter the most. In terms of picking between one or the other, it goes back to that question of intensity. It feels the ink box blacks track your fingers more closely, and it's a little more responsive. On the other hand, the ink blacks feel a little more relaxed in comparison. But I really do think the easiest way to know which ones you prefer most to most concretize the feeling is to actually try them in person. So we can see that there are reasons to choose one switch over the other. The ink black V2s and the ink box blacks can and do coexist. One does not supersede the other. Indeed, both are still produced. And perhaps more crucially, the older ink black V2s were not repositioned as a budget option after the ink box blacks came out. This means they occupy different niches. In my view, not realizing that these two options are positioned differently is the mistake that many have made when talking about the two in tandem. Let's take something like the iPhone for example. When the newest generation, let's say the iPhone 14 comes out, the iPhone 13 is turned into a more budget friendly option. In this example, it's strictly the newer the better. But now let's look at the MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. While in some circumstances one is better than the other, maybe you really need the portability or maybe you really need the processing power. The thing is, they're just made for different use cases. I think this is how we should view the ink black V2s and the ink box blacks moving forward. So to sum up, one ink black switch is not a replacement for the other. There are two separate expressions for what an ink switch can be. Perhaps a little anticlimatically, in this marquee matchup, both switches are winners. Objectively speaking, of course. Ultimately, each is designed for different preferences, so both options have their own merits. And it's really easy to see why either one of these ink black switches have been the de facto recommendation for linear switches. These ink switches are agreeable to use and have a neutral sound profile, so in a sense, you really can't go wrong with them. But when it comes to finding the best switch for you, I would say though, it's a little myopic to only focus on these two and not on all the options out there. I would really recommend sampling inks yourself alongside some other switches, just like we did with the sound test, so you can discover your own preferences. If you enjoyed this video, you might also like the video on the North Pole V2s. In the case of the North Poles, there were two different versions, and the newest version did completely supersede the old ones. If that interests you, I'll throw a link in the corner for you to check out. With that said, thank you for watching, and here's the full sound test of the two switches that we covered today.